The lower quarter screen is a necessary technique when your patient subjectively reports a history of either myelopathic or radicular symptoms. What we want to do is organize this process systematically in our mind. So we want to first perform active range of motion of the lumbar spine, followed by myotomal testing, dermatomal testing, and finally reflex and upper motor neuron testing. So let's start with active range of motion of the lumbar spine and have our patient stand up <coughs> and face that way. Good, we then want him to flex his lumbar spine. Touch your toes, please. Good, and I'm going to perform an overpressure if no pain was elicited by the active motion. And come on back. Hands on your hips and let's do some extension. Come on back. Again, overpressure if no pain is present. Okay. Let's then do some side flexion. Hands on your, ha uh, hands on your uh, sides and come down the lateral thigh. Again, if no pain is present, we want some overpressure. And again to the opposite side. Good. To assess lumbar rotation, have the patient uh, sitting on a plinth. Have them sitting up straight, cross the hands, and rotate, let's say, first to the left. And over pressure, no pain is present. And the opposite side. Good. We then want to have our patient stand up and perform a deep bilateral squat to assess both muscular strength and range of motion. Again, you can guard your patient. Good. All right, next thing we want to do is begin myotomal testing. So to assess the L4-5 nerve root, we can perform a unilateral stance. So go ahead. Good, now this is, you, we're looking for hip drop here. So again, assess on the other side. Good. While the patient's still standing, let's do L4-L5 L4, L4, L5 testing, being heel walking. Get out of the way here. If the toes hit the ground, that's usually a sign of anterior tib weakness and could be an L4, L5 dysfunction. We then want the patient to perform toe walking, which is the S1 nerve root. <laughs> Very good. Come on back. Like a ballerina. Yeah, it's beautiful. All right. Have your patient then in short sit. To assess L1, L2, we want to resist hip flexion. So bring your hip up and push down. Good. To assess the L3, L4 myotome, we want to resist knee extension. Good, and bring it back and resist. Good. To test the L5 nerve root, we want to resist great toe extension. So bring it up and good. And it's myotomal testing. So now let's move on, move on to the dermatomes. Have your, ask your patient to close their eyes. And now we want to test both sides, assessing for asymmetry and how the patient feels the uh, location that we're testing. So how does that feel? Can you feel that? Uh, upper thigh, yes. Okay, where's that? Uh, middle thigh, kind of okay. inside. Does that feel the same as that? Yes. Okay, so we're going to go through the whole dermatomal exam just like that, but for visualization purposes I'll take you through a little bit faster. So we got L1 here, L2 here, L3 right here at the medial knee, L4 at the medial malleolus, and L5 just here on the dorsum of the foot. We can test S1 on the heel back here, S2 up here on the proximal calf, and you can uh, go read up on S3 and, and S4 on your own. So what we're going to do now is assess reflexes. So I'm going to take out my hammer right here, if I can get out of my pocket. Here we go. So we're going to assess the patellar reflex, good, and the Achilles reflex. After reflex testing, we want our patient positioned in supine to assess the upper motor neuron signs. All right, here I'm going to test Babinski. Good. <laughs> He's ticklish. So that's a negative Babinski test. If we're looking for flaring of the toes, that would be a positive sign. Here we also want to assess clonus. Looking for extra beats. And that's how you perform a lower quarter screen.